Hallelujah. Glory to God in the eyes. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for joining us tonight once again. Now, Bible story. God bless you. God bless you tonight. Hallelujah. Let's pardon our ears as we pray before we start the Bible study. Father, we thank you once again tonight. We give you all the praise. We exalt your holy name. We glorify your name for your goodness, for your mercy, for bringing us together once again to study at your feet. Lord, to you be all the praise, to you be all the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask, O God, Spirit of the living God, is there any sin in our lives? We pray that you will forgive us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will touch our lips tonight. We pray that you will touch our tongues tonight. We pray, O oh God, that even as we speak your word, we pray that you will teach us yourself in the name of Jesus. We pray that every soul under the sound of my voice will be blessed in the name of Jesus. We pray that our hearts, our mind will be recipient, will be fertile ground for your word in the mighty name of Jesus. This word will transform our lives tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help us to grow more in you. Help us to grow in your word. Help us to grow in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just listen to this wonderful uh, worship song or praise section. Um, as we will come back once we are finished with that. God bless you. Somebody give the Lord some praise in this place. Come on, come on. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Father, you are worthy. We bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, so down, okay, God, and you need my feet, but walk back me from Oh Lord, oh Lord, so down, okay, God. And you need my feet, but walk back before. A long walk, tiny walk to break out. Because she baba no care. Tiny walk to feet, but go up there before. All our room to down. And you need to feel But what bad before Tiny walks Tiny walks Never give up I don't care I don't care Tiny walks Tiny walks to be born But what
the Lord never sees it. This mercy has never come to an end. This is Gospel Pentecostal Assembly, the living word. We are based in Leeds, United Kingdom. Thank you for joining us. It's our Bible study tonight. Hallelujah. So tonight we are going into another wonderful topic from where we stopped last week. Last week we finished prayer and uh, we know that God has spoken to us and we have been able to understand that it is only in prayer that we communicate with God or to God. Praise God. We communicate to God in prayer. But there are some times when we pray and God does not answer. There are some times we pray and God does not answer. And that is when we are filled with sin. And we quoted the word of God in Isaiah chapter number 59 where we talked about the hands of God are not shut in to save neither is here so heavy to hear but our iniquity have separated us from the love of god our iniquity have separated us from the love of god i pray that the lord will give us the power to overcome sin in the mighty name of jesus because sin is really a very bad thing that disturbs or you know cause a breakage between us and god praise god or between us and God hearing our prayer request. So tonight we are going into another uh, chapter or another topic which is lessons on destiny. 
we are going into another topic tonight that says lessons on destiny a lot of us know what exactly destiny is especially for those of us that are from the um part of africa we probably would know what destiny is all about we probably will know what destiny is all about destiny is most of the time you know if we look at it critically well it's the life of man in simply put it's a life of man and uh, i know that back then what people do what parents do they go once that child has been born, once the child has been born they go into you know some uh future readers or fortune tellers to look at the destiny and the future of that child or the kind of life that child is going to be living they do that in those days uh, i don't know if they still do it today in this day and age this 21st century so but they go out of their way to look at the future and the life of that child but today we are going to be looking at another perspective or debunking some of the things that has been practiced in those days and that are not by blinker or that is not good and probably know exactly what destiny is all about what exactly is destiny and that's what we're going to be looking at today so we're talking about we're looking at lessons on destiny and our bible readings will be taken from romans chapter number 9 verse 11 to 13 romans chapter 9 verse 11 to 13 let me quickly read that to you praise god hallelujah the bible says for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of god according to election might stand not of works but of him that call it it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger as it is written jacob i love but esau have i hated jacob i love but esau have i hated this is a very popular story of jacob and esau and which you know um paul was trying to refer to that and talking about the concept of destiny concept of purpose concept of life that god has predestined a man to live how god wants it he knows whatever way god wants to you to live your life he knows okay god has planned every single person's life you know for like i said earlier in those days people or parents go to look at how a child is going to turn out to be in the future they want to know the future they want to know tomorrow and that's why we do that but god already has a plan to every man god already has a plan to every man that is the story of jacob and esau so paul was referring to that to say those children they never knew anything they never committed anything they never done anything evil but god already had a plan and purpose for their life god allows some people to fulfill his own plan for himself because he is god for example look at the story of um, um judas iscariot judas iscariot was proposed was destined for the life that he lived was destined to 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 show who jesus christ is to be crucified if not nobody would you know probably recognize or want to take jesus and kill okay but judas iscariot was designed for that purpose and the bible talks about he said woe unto that man from whom the son of man is revealed woe unto the man that person has been predestined for woe praise god what about pharaoh Pharaoh has been predestined to be destroyed so that the children of Israel might leave the bondage where they were. So the same thing with Esau. Praise God. The same thing with Esau. That's the destiny. But let's go further. That's, I'm just summarizing that uh, passage of the scripture. But before then, to corroborate the word of God, let's go to chapter 8 of Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30. The Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called to his purpose. Did you see that? Those who are called to his purpose, all things work together for their good. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called 
and whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. He was talking about Jesus. Jesus was the firstborn that he predestinated that would come and give his life so that we can have life, so that we can have eternal life, so that we can be saved. Praise God. So we can then say the destiny of Jesus was to die. The destiny of Jesus was to die. The destiny of Jacob was to come and supplant Esau. The destiny, destiny, praise God. Why are we learning this lesson today? To understand the truth and clarify misconception about destiny. To clarify the truth, to understand the truth and the misconception about destiny. So what is destiny? Destiny is one of the most popular misunderstood concepts in the world today. However, this lesson will give us insight into the biblical truth about this subject. Praise God. According to the English dictionary, destiny is a state or end that has been decided beforehand. Is a state, is a life, is is a is a life of person that has been ordained, that has been preordained, that has been decided beforehand. For example, let me give you uh, an instance. When they want to have elections, the politician goes around and begins to campaign and say, "Oh, vote for me, vote for me, vote for me." But guess what? I hear so many people say, "Oh, the election has been, you know, decided already," and uh, and that. Oh, there were fraudulent elections in a particular area. So why is that person winning? That means some people somewhere are decided and say, we know who is already going to be win. We're just doing this for formality purpose. Praise God. And guess what? There will be evidences that this other person that cheated should not even win at all. But she will, he or she will be the one to win the election. Praise God. So those people are the organizers or people counting the votes. They are preordained, they already knew, they had assigned, they had decided who is going to win. And there is nothing, absolutely anything you can do about it. Go to court, the people will bring evidence that yes, he actually won. Praise God. So that is destiny. So destiny is a life that has been preordained, that has been concluded and decided beforehand. So, or, or it's, it's a conclusion of a matter beforehand. Praise God. So, it that mean that God had already decided how the life of Jacob and Esau was going to be even before they were born? Because the Bible says in that Romans chapter 9, verse 11 to 13, that these boys, they didn't know anything. They were not born yet. They didn't know what fight is all about. They didn't know what quarrel is all about. They didn't know what sickness is all about. They didn't know how terrible this world is. But yet, God had decided the life of Jacob before he was born. God had already decided the life of Esau before he was born. And that's why the Bible says, Jacob I love, Esau I hated. Praise God. Hallelujah. God had already decided that Pharaoh was going to be a destroyed man. And that's why God said he had added his heart so that he would not listen to Moses. And yet God sent Moses to go and meet Pharaoh so that the plan of God would be fulfilled. Imagine if God didn't do that. There was no way the children of Israel would have gone out. Of Egypt. So God knew that he needed to show the people of Israel that I am your God. I am he who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Oh, I am the one who brought you out with a mighty hand. I am the one who had in the heart of Pharaoh so that it might be destroyed for your own sake. Praise God. I am the one who had in the heart of Pharaoh so that he will pursue you. And guess what? To, to be honest, there are so many things that God has shown to Pharaoh that would that should make him believe that, yes, there is a God that is above all his God. God showed him his sign. His snake swallows all the snakes of the magician in Egypt. Uh, their firstborn were dying. The firstborn son were dying in Egypt. Yes, the people of Egypt was thinking, how oh, are we going to do it? And the people of Israel, just under their tent, there was a sign made. None of the sons died. Nobody died. So it was evident for Pharaoh to have let the people of Israel go. But yet, his heart was hardened. I pray may that not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. May our destiny not be to be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, 
It is an account of what someone will experience in the future. That's destiny. What you are going to experience in the future, that is destiny. We need to understand that we are not a product of biological accidents. As science tells us, instead we have a destiny and have been created for a purpose. There is a purpose for which God has created you and I. There is a purpose for which God has allowed you to live. There is a purpose, there is a destiny that you and I need to carry out as human beings. Not just as human beings, but as believers. There is a purpose, there is a destiny that you need to find out what that destiny is. There is a destiny that you need to understand, that you need to carry out. If you do not fulfill that purpose, then absolutely that means you have walked out of God's plan for your life. Lessons on destiny. Now, let's go to the first point. Is there anything like destiny? That's number one point. Is there anything like destiny? Absolutely, yes. God has predetermined plans for us to discover and follow. The concept of destiny is actually true and it helps to explain what that when God created man in the beginning, he created him for a reason and not by trial or error. We have to understand that every single man that God created, from the beginning, there is a purpose for which you have been created. But you have the right to yourself to discover yourself. I'm not talking about the parent that goes into the future to look at what their children is going to become. That's not the kind of destiny that God wants you to find out. That's not the kind of plan that God wants you to find out. That's sorcery. That's witchcraft. When you go and look at the future of your children and say, and go to those people, put something down, uh, just, just conjure some incantations and say, I want to see. Imagine, <laughs> imagine praise God. Imagine a, a parent goes to an herbalist to go and conjure. I want to look at the destiny of a son. And the herbalist sees that a son is carrying a mic and start preaching the gospel. And preaching gospel and healing and calling the name of Jesus. Immediately, the family sees the future and says, This one is calling the name of Jesus. And there is fire in the house of the family. What, what will happen? Praise God. That's to show you that, you know, that is evil. Praise God. But God needs you to stay in the plan that He has proposed for you. If God has destined you to be a worldwide evangelist, I was listening to. A testimony of Rehan Bonke a couple of days ago, the great evangelist is, is going to be with the Lord now. And I'm so amazed at the destiny of this man. God showed him his destiny. He said he was sleeping and he saw the map of Africa. He saw the map of, map of Africa and he began to pray. And he began to pray. That's why you you know most of the places that Rehan Bonke preached, you know, God helped him to rock miracles are Africa. Just Africa. He's a German. And he will live his life, almost all his life in Africa. Because he saw, he was in God's plan. God himself revealed his destiny to him. And he stayed in the plan and the purpose of God for his life. Oh, one of the testimonies of Brian Bonke shook me a couple of days ago. He said, never trust in a man. Never trust in a man. That was when he started his ministry. When, when, when he was beginning to fulfill the purpose and destiny of God for his life. Ray Adbonke said, you know, he was just starting up. All he needed to do, there was a revival and he was meant to preach. And there's another man to do deliverance and, you know, healing section. But on the day of the revival, the man didn't come. The other pastor didn't come. And then he looked up and down and said, how am I going to do this crusade? There are people with sickness. And then he turned to the word of God. He turned to the word of God and said, yes, God, I know you are the one that called me. But I am sorry. I depended on this pastor to come and do the miracle section. And guess what? When he got up to the pulpit and he finished preaching, and the Spirit of God just spoke to him and said, Just say whatever you want. And there were people that are blind, about 20 people that are blind in his front. He said, The Spirit of God just helped him to lay those people in the front, ask them to line up in front of him. And he said, Close your eyes. He said, in the name of Jesus, your eyes be open. And immediately, 
20 blind people right there and then received their sight. And he said, never, never trust in the man. When you trust in the man, you are bound to be disappointed. But his destiny was to trust in God. The one that has shown him his destiny. He saw himself going to Africa. He saw himself preaching. He saw himself you know, performing miracle signs and wonders. But yet, he never trusted in that God. Until God helped him to realize that you are only not doing this work effectively because you trusted in a man that I have called. A man that I have called. Praise God. So, when you stay in God's plan, when you stay in the plan of God for your life, when you stay in the destiny that God has created for you, the purpose for which God has called you, then God will always be there to show up. God will always be there to assist you to fulfill the destiny that he has given to you. So the question, what is your destiny in God? Have you found out your own purpose yet? Have you found out your own purpose yet? Praise God. Hallelujah. So we are not made by trial and error. No, not at all. But we are created with a purpose. When God created Adam in the book of Genesis chapter number 2, the Bible says, said, he said, and God breathed into his nostril. There was a purpose for which God breathed into the nose of Adam. Oh, there was a purpose for which God said, Adam, sleep. Let me bring a woman out of you. Oh, there was a purpose for which God said to Eve, this is your husband. Join to him. And that's why the Bible says, what God has joined together, let no man put us under. That's the purpose. That's the destiny. When you are married, then you are fulfilling God's purpose. You are fulfilling God's destiny. And that's why we see so many errors in the world today. Praise God. Oh, this one say, I don't want to marry. This one say, I have the right to take off uh, the, these photos inside of me. Oh, this one say, I have the right to myself. No, that is not the plan of God. That is not the destiny of God for you. The destiny of God for you is that you have pregnancy and you give birth to baby. The Bible says God created man and woman and he commanded them to replenish the earth. How do you replenish the earth when you, do, when you are not married? Or when you don't get married? Or when you just want to remain and say, okay, I'm not getting married. I want to get married to this, you know. Praise God. Praise God. That is devil. That is devil changing your mentality. That is devil changing your lifestyle or the plan or wants to change the plan of God for you. But God has a destiny for everyone. Praise God. God has a purpose for which he named you. What name you are called. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, all through the scripture, destinies were revealed and we saw how some fulfilled it while others did not. So, in other words, there is it is possible for someone to fulfill the destiny that God has given to him and it's possible for a person not to fulfill the destiny. A common example is someone who had his destiny revealed before the time and followed John the Baptist. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, let's see what the Bible says about John. Praise God. Isaiah chapter number 40 verse number 3. The Bible says, the voice of him that cried, the voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So, who was in the desert? Who prepared the way for God or for Jesus? It is John the Baptist. That was his destiny. That was his destiny. Oh, I love the story of John the Baptist. When John was arrested by Herod and when he wanted to be killed, guess what? That man was not sorrowful. Was not sorrowful that he was dying. He was happy that he had fulfilled the mandate that prophet Isaiah had prophesied in this Isaiah chapter number 40. That he was going to come and prepare the way of God. And he had actually did. And then salvation came. So in other words, if John the Baptist was not born, Probably Jesus Christ wouldn't have fulfilled his destiny, or probably Jesus Christ wouldn't have been born for you and I to be saved. So there is a plan that God has set for every man. In fact, for every one of us on the on this earth, God had a plan for redemption. God had a destiny for us to be saved from the hand and the bondage of sin. That is why God made Adam. God made Eve. From Genesis to Malachi, jump into New Testament. God brought John the Baptist. 
so that he can prepare the way of God, so that the Bible, the scripture might be fulfilled, so that Jesus Christ would come and meet him at that water to be baptized. Then the Spirit of God could come down upon Jesus, then Jesus could begin the miracle signs and wonder to bring salvation into the world. God had a plan. God had a destiny for every single person. In fact, the woman that sat at, 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 that met Jesus in, in Samaria, you know, that gave Jesus water, it was a destiny. It was Jesus' destiny to meet that woman so that the woman would go. Guess what? The Bible says when the woman saw Jesus and when Jesus spoke the, his life to her, the woman went into the city and tell everyone about the Savior. Oh, the Savior that we are expecting is here. Is that your destiny also? Praise God. Is that your destiny also? I'm sorry to disappoint you. It is part of every believer's destiny to go into the world and preach the gospel. Tell people about the salvation. Tell people about Jesus. Tell people about the lost, uh, the, the man that came to give his life for you and I. Tell people about the saving grace and the love of Christ. That is part of your destiny. So an example has been given. That woman fulfilled her destiny. John the Baptist fulfilled her destiny. Praise God. Hallelujah. John had already been prophesied. John chapter 1 verse 23. The Bible says, He said, I am the voice. You see, confirming what Isaiah chapter number 40 said. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said in the prophet Isaiah, John himself was saying it, I am the one. What prophet Isaiah had prophesied that is going to prepare the way of God. Is going to prepare the way of his son Jesus. Is going to make his path straight. Is going to bring salvation to the world. Did he fulfill his destiny or not? Yes, he did fulfill his destiny. So, are you in the destiny that God has given to you? Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the eyes. Even Samson, before he was born, the angel of the Lord appeared to his parents in Judges chapter 13, verse 1 to 14. And told them of his destiny, but unfortunately for Samson, he cut short his destiny due to lost Samson, a very great man. We know the story of Samson in Judges chapter 13, verse 1 to 14. Samson was a man that God had already planned his life. God had already planned his life, what he needed to do. God gave him a good plan. God gave him a good plan. God gave him a good plan, but yet he didn't fulfill. Then he diverted out of God's plan. Oh, God gave him that power so that he can deliver the people of God. And that is why anywhere that there is that is that is evil happening to the people of Israel, to God's people, Samson will come and deliver them. Samson will come and fight for them. There is always victory. But he didn't complete that destiny. Oh, he swayed away. And that is why when he, he, he fell, and he was about to be killed. Oh, that God of mercy, that God of kindness. He called on God. He said, God, for this last time, please give me power. And God listened. Praise God. And God listened because of lust. Because of lust. That means that tells you that it is possible for you to run out of God's destiny for your life if you allow sin, if you allow lust. If you allow things that God has not planned to be in that destiny, if you bring in evil into your destiny, if you bring in a devil into your destiny, you can take away that plan, that good plan of God for your life. Praise God. So it is important for us to know that we have been predestinated for a particular purpose. The same way a potter designs, you know, his work, Ports and others for a specific purpose. God has created us all for a specific purpose. And that purpose is revealed in our destiny. Little wonder the psalmist said in Psalm 139, verse 14. Let's see what the Bible says in Psalm 139, verse 14. Praise God. Psalm 139, verse 14. The Bible says, I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. 
and that my soul the words right well. Marvelous are thy works, and my soul knoweth thou well. Praise God. We are wonderfully and beautifully made. Physically, spiritually, in our destiny, God has made us perfectly. God has designed you perfectly. Praise God. Or in a, in, in a platform that I was earlier before we started, we're reading about um, God, you know, designing us. God refining us. And a sister of mine was giving an illustration that a part of the plan of God, out of the design of God, we are bound, we might probably or possibly lose some things for us to fulfill the plan and purpose of God. If God is refining you in a, as a goal, you are bound to lose your friends. Praise God. For example, God has designed or opposed somebody to be an evangelist, to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. And you have a friend that tells you to go to club every night. If you stick with that friend, you will not fulfill that destiny. But if you cut it off, if you cut it off, then it is possible that you will fulfill the destiny. Praise God. I'm so glad tonight that God is helping us to understand that he has designed every single person, every single one of us for his purpose and to his purpose alone. For his purpose and to his purpose. We are wonderfully and fearfully made. That I am fearfully and wonderfully made, it is without doubt that God has set us for a purpose that is manifested in destiny. Even the Israelites, long before they were formed, God revealed their ordeals in Egypt to Abraham and how they will subsequently come out to the promised land in Genesis 15 verse 13 to 16. Praise God. The Israelites, God's people, God had already designed their life. God designed their lives. God designed their life. That, oh, these guys, they will go into exile. They will go into captivity. But guess what? I will bring them out with my powerful hand. Praise God. Destiny is a subsequent or is a sequence of events of destiny is a sequence of events of what God has planned for every individual even before they came into this world. However, fulfillment of destiny depends on how you live in harmony with God. Jeremiah chapter 29. Praise God. Jeremiah chapter number 29, verse 11. Let's see what it says. Jeremiah 29, 11. The Bible says, For I know the thought that I think towards you, that said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, said the Lord, and I will return, I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, said the Lord, and I will bring him or bring you again into the place where I caused you to be carried away captive. Praise God. You see the plan of God to confirm what happened in Genesis chapter 15, to confirm how the children of Israel were sent into captivity, to bring them out with his mighty hand. Praise God. He said, the thought I have towards you are the thought of good, not of evil, to give you an expectant day. That tells you, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. That tells you when you are going through fire, you are going through it so that God can bring you into an abundance of grace. Oh, into an abundance of wonder. God is taking you through. That's why the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, he said, the thought and the plan I have for you are the thoughts and plan of good, not of evil, to give you an expected end. 
Someone is asking, why would God allow the children of Israel to walk that long years when they can just walk a few days? Oh, because God knew if you would go through the short means, oh, you might be destroyed. So you need to go through the, the, the longer one so that you can see the power of God. How many times would they see God's power? The longer time they spent on the road and saw how God moved mightily. When darkness was there, God brought down a pillar of fire by night to make them see. When, you know, it looks like, oh, they are too exposed. God brought down cloud during the day so that the enemy will not see them. God showed so mighty things. When they were tested, God brought out water from the rock. Oh, when they needed food, God rained down himself as manna for them to eat. Oh, God did a whole lot of wonders for years. And yet they still didn't believe that God had a good plan for them. If they had walked through the 40 days journey, probably, you know, there was, they wouldn't understand that God was so powerful because the days were so shortened. So God already knew. God had a plan for every one of us. Whatever it is you are going through right now, whatever it is you are trusting God for right now, it may take long, brethren, but trust me, God is walking you out into one thing, into a greater place. God is walking you out. God is working on your destiny to give you an expected day. That's why the Bible says in that Jeremiah chapter 29, it says, and so you shall call me and search for me, you will find me. While you are walking that long road to get to that place and destiny that you thought and that you knew that God has called you into, search God. Keep searching God. Keep searching God. When you are walking through fire, keep searching God. When you are taking the longer route, keep searching God. That's what the Bible said. And then you will call me. Verse 13, it said, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye search for me with all your heart. So, God has a good plan. God has a destiny. God has a plan for you to fulfill. But it is left for you whether to fulfill that destiny or not. It is left for you to search God in a way that you will find him in a way that he will show himself strong to put you and to take you to that place and that destiny that he has proposed for you. But while you are going through that, if you doubt in your heart, if you allow sin in your heart, if you divert yourself from the plan and purpose of God, it's all on you. Praise God. That's why the Bible talks about that Judas that I said earlier, that woe unto that man, through whom Christ is revealed, through whom the fall of Christ came. Oh, are you saying, is it possible for Judas Iscariot not to have experienced what he experienced? Oh, absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. Hallelujah. Destiny is a sequence of events. So, finally, what are the biblical truths about destiny? God, number one, God has predestinated us for good. I repeat, God has predestinated us for good. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, the plan I have for you are the plan of good, not of evil, to give you an expected end. That's the plan of purpose for God for you. Oh, so many people will want to die. Oh, why is God allowing me to seek? Oh, why is God allowing this sickness? If God had not allowed that sickness, you would have probably stand up on your, in your house and go to where we destroy you. Praise God. Oh, if God had not taken the leg off you, if the Lord had not taken the leg off you, you would have walked into fire and the fire would have consumed you. I hope God is speaking to somebody tonight. You are going through some challenges big time and you are thinking, oh God, are you there? Oh yes, God is there. God allowed it. Look at Job. I keep talking about Job all the time. If God had not allowed the devil to penetrate into his life, there is nothing, nothing would happen to Job. He was an upright man. The Bible described him as an upright man. Upright man. Upright man. The man that knew no sin. The man that regards God. He brings his children. He prays. He makes sacrifice over for his children before God. He teaches his children. And yet God allowed the devil to penetrate into his life. Praise God. Because God knew. If I had not allowed that, probably the time that Job was seated and could not walk around, probably he could have just abandoned God and do something else that is bad. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number two, God has predestined all for adoption as children in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. God has predestinated us or predestined us for adoption as children. The Bible says, having predestinated us 
unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. This is a plan of God for us to be redeemed. This is a plan of God for us to be redeemed. Praise the Lord. Right from the own goal, I told you about the children of Israel, who was also in the plan of God, so that Jesus would come and redeem us. We that we are Gentiles, we that we didn't know Christ, we can come into the fold, we can come into the life of Christ. We can come into the fold of the Israelites. Praise God. We can call the same God, the Israelites, the Israelis that are calling out. We can call the same Yahweh. We can call the same Jehovah. We can call the same El Shaddai. And he will listen. And he will hear us. Because that is his plan to adopt us into the sonship of him. Praise God. Number two. Believers are predestined to bring salvation to the unbeliever. Acts chapter 13, verse 47 to 49. It's our I told you earlier, it's our destiny. Oh, I told you earlier. Oh, Jesus confirmed that in Matthew chapter 28. He said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. Baptizing them, bringing them to salvation. It's our destiny. We have been predestined to bring salvation to unbelievers. Number four. Walking in harmony with God is the only way to fulfill our God-given destiny. Romans chapter 8, verse 20, 28. Walking in harmony with God is part of our own way of fulfilling God-given destiny. Praise God. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. The Bible says something there. It says, And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. When you know you are called according to God's purpose, you have to walk in his ways. You have to walk in his ways. You have to walk with him. You have to, you know, give yourself in harmony to him. Dwell in his presence. Dwell in his secret place. Fellowship with God. That's why he said in Jeremiah 29, he said, if you now call me and such for me with your heart you will find me so you better seek god with all your heart you better seek god with all your heart praise god hallelujah so you have to walk in harmony how do you walk in harmony search the scripture fellowship with god pray at all time seek his face enjoy his presence and then while walking in his presence while searching the scripture while praying while meditating in the word of God, then God will begin to reveal further and further and further to you what you need to do. Oh, Joseph knew his destiny in God. Joseph knew his plan. That is why when Potiphar came to draw him, he said that I may do this and sin against my heavenly father. So he knew. Joseph knew what he what he needed to do. Joseph knew where he was going. That is why when, before he left for Egypt, before he was sold, he saw in the vision. Nobody went to go and consult Oracle for Joseph. Nobody did. Nobody did. Praise God. It is only when God revealed to you that you know the plan of God for you. Oh, it is only when God revealed your destiny and purpose to you that you know your purpose and plan that God has given to you. If you go to an Oracle, you are only deceiving yourself. That's witchcraft. That is big, big witchcraft. Joseph didn't go to anywhere. Joseph slept and God revealed his plan for him. God revealed what he needed to do. When Potiphar came, it was easy for him to just resist. Imagine an Abalist told you the plan of God for you. Oh, you should run. Imagine an Abalist telling you what you are going to become in future. You have to run. You have to run. Praise the Lord. It is only God that can reveal to you. God told Jonah, I need you to go to Nineveh. This is the plan. This is the purpose. This is what I need you to carry out. But guess what? He actually heard God. He saw the plan of God. He saw what God wants him to do. But guess what? He turned the other way around. He didn't go. God showed him what he needed to see. Praise God. So God will always reveal his plan for you. His purpose for which you are created. Oh, there are so many times I've told people, Oh, I know what I need to do. Oh, I know my calling. I know what God has given to me. So many times God has revealed to me. God has revealed to me why my destiny. And I'm trusting God and I'm walking in the plan and purpose and in harmony with what God has shown to me. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. So you too, you can see 
you can see what God wants you to become, what God wants you to do for his purpose, for his purpose and to his purpose. God created John the Baptist for his purpose. God created Jacob for his purpose. If there was no Jacob, there will not be Israelites. Oh, if there was no Jacob, there will not be Israelites. If Jacob had not supplanted Esau, there will not be Israelites. If there was no Isaac, there will not be Jacob. That's the purpose of God. For his own way, for his own plan, for his own mindset, for his own journey, for his own will. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. So, number four is working with harmony with God. Working in harmony with God is the only way to fulfill our God-given destiny. Number five, the last one. So God has called us all for a specific purpose, which we have to discover. Oh, discovering is yours, brethren. Discovering the purpose is yours. I told you earlier. I said, God will only show you if you ask. It is only God that will show you. Nobody will show you your destiny in life. If anybody shows you your destiny, that is witchcraft. Praise God. God said in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, said, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nation. Abalis will not say God ordained somebody to be a prophet. Praise God. Hallelujah. God will ordain you. God will show you. And you will discover. Praise God. You will discover if you seek God. Isaiah 49 verse 1 to 6 finally. Isaiah 49 verse 1 to 6. The Bible says, Listen, O eyes, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, and he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, and he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver had he hid me, and said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Then I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with and my work and my God. And now said the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorified in the heights of the Lord and my God shall be my strength. Praise God. Verse 6, And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the perverse of Israel. Praise God. You see, God knew Israel. God had a plan for Israel. God was... God, God, God is just the best architect or the best designer ever. He designed our life. He gave us his plan. He gave us the destiny that he wants us to carry out. God designs our life. So it is left for you to discover. It is left for you to pursue. It is left for you to walk in it. Praise God. God created Adam and Eve for a purpose. He didn't create them to come and eat the apple or the fruits. But they diverted into another path. That's why they were sent out of the garden. Yet God came down for them. Praise God. So it is possible for you to miss out on God's plan for your life. And it is possible for you to still work in the plan of God. But I dare tell you, the plan, the purpose of God for you is the best. I pray for someone here tonight. That God will restore you back to his plan for you in the mighty name of Jesus. God created you with a destiny and you are not just a biological accident. However, you must realize that the fulfillment of destiny is des determined is determined by our actions or even in actions. 
if you don't do anything, your destiny may not come through. And if you do something, it will come through. And what you do will determine whether it will come through or not, whether you're in the plan of God or not. Praise God. Hallelujah. But well, guess what? If you are here tonight and you want to find out your purpose in life, you want to find out your destiny in life, you want to find out what God has in stuff for you, you need to know who God is. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need to surrender your life to him so that he can come into you and reveal himself to you. You must first accept him as your Lord and Savior. You must first accept that he came. The purpose for which God sent Jesus was for you to say, be saved. You must first acknowledge that. Then he will show you your destiny. And he will help you to walk in his destiny for your life. Bow your heads with me and say this prayer if you're one of them. If you're one of those that wants to receive Christ into their lives, bow your heads and say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I confess and forsake my sins. I acknowledge that you are my Lord and my Savior. I believe with my heart and confess with my mouth that you are Lord and my Savior. I believe in my heart that you died for me. Save me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Erase my name from the book of death. Help me to serve you from now on. Give me your spirit tonight. That I may continue to dwell in your purpose. That I may continue to dwell in your plan. That I may fulfill your destiny for me. Thank you, gracious Father. I submit myself to you tonight. Save me. Come and live inside of me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you have said that prayer with me, thank you so much. Congratulations. Welcome into the fold. I'm so excited to have you. God bless you. If you have said that prayer with me, please feel free to write me on the number email chain on your screen right now or send it to me on this platform right now and I will short get back to you I will want to pray for you. I want to know you. I want to be your friend. I want to send you materials, books, and Bibles that can help you to know your destiny, to study the world, and to be in the plan and purpose of God for your life. Please feel free to send me your name and your number on the number and email shown on your screen. And I would love to know you more. God bless you. And for every one of us that are here tonight, that we're already in Christ, that we already received Him. However, probably we have fallen out of God's plan. Probably we have gone the other way like, jo uh, like Jonah. Probably we have gone the other way. God is a merciful God. He can bring us back into his plan. God allow you to hear this word again. To let you know and to remind you that my son, my daughter, oh, I have loved you from your mother's womb. I made you. And I have a plan for you. And I'm calling you back again. I'm giving you the second chance. Come back into the destiny that I've created for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray tonight for every one of us here tonight. If peradventure we have worked out of your destiny for us, if peradventure we have worked out of your purpose for us, not fulfilling the destiny that you have set before us, Lord, have mercy. Draw us back. Call us back to yourself. Bring us back to the fold. Bring us back to the plan. Your word said the plan and purpose you have for us are the thoughts of good and not of evil to give us an expected end. Lord, we pray that we will not walk out of your plan again. Lord, bring us back home in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will receive us with all your might, with all your power, with all your strength, and you will walk this journey with us. Lord, you will help us to fulfill that destiny. You will help us to fulfill the destiny that you have set before us. Oh, thank you, ancient of this. Lord, we pray that every power, every forces that wants to thwart the plan you have for us, that wants to take us out of your plan, Lord, we cancel that power, we cancel that spirit in the name of Jesus. We render them powerless tonight in the name of Jesus. We take authority over them. Lord, we raise a standard against every forces, against the purpose you have for us, against your plan for us tonight in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone that is trusting you for revelation? Father, we pray that you will show us. Show us the destiny. Show us what we need to do. Show us the plan you have for us so that we'll be able to walk in it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise. As we go tonight, we pray that your presence will remain with us. We pray that your presence will reveal to us tonight, even as we sleep. Thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. May we say the grace of fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us 
all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight. God bless you. I'm so glad to have you here. It's your destiny to be here tonight to hear the word of God. If you're watching on YouTube, it's your destiny also to be challenged and to be encouraged with this word. And go out and begin to do the bidding of the Lord, even as you go after this message. God bless you. I remain your friend. My name is Stephen Adegoke. God bless you. Please feel free to join us again on Sunday by 10 a.m. on this platform. And please feel free to join us on Sunday night as well by 10, 11.55 p.m. We would love to have you. God bless you for a midnight of fire and power where we pray and bring in the hand of God and break every chains in our life. God bless you. I will see you again on Sunday. Bye for now.